بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة خلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء اتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما اللهم أصلح لنا شأننا كله ولا تكلنا إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين Alhamdulillah, I just want to take the opportunity to welcome you to this first session which was announced uh, as a part of the program that was started here at the Al-Fitra Center um, for the uh, the Brothers Program which was entitled Real Talk and Alhamdulillah, we started this program in the beginning of the month of March and we had our first session and the first session was an introductory section or introduction to the program and alhamdulillah we decided that we were going to start uh, by doing different themes every month and the first theme that we plan to start on was discussing the characteristics of the servants of Ar-Rahman or Sifat Ibad Ar-Rahman and that was supposed to start last week however due to the situation and the crisis that we are going through right now and the fact that everything had to be shut down due to uh, COVID-19 and what's happening uh, we had to delay and cancel the actual live program at, uh, with the brothers and um, Alhamdulillah we decided today to start and to do it uh, uh, streaming live we initially did have the intention of streaming the lecture portion live even before the cancellation occurred but uh, Qadr Allah the cancellation did happen and there's nobody here but we're still going to do this portion of the lecture to Inshallah, benefit one another bi ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to be sincere. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to be his servants. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to benefit from what we hear. This uh, topic of the servants of Allah or the servants of Ibad rahman the, the servants of Ar-Rahman, is a very, very important issue. And for the brothers that were here on the first week, we had a discussion with regards to the objective of our existence and the fact that one of the greatest blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah can bestow upon His servant is understanding and realizing their purpose. And that purpose is to service Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as He is deserving of worship subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when a servant understands that that's the best thing that he can have, that is a blessing in itself. And we mentioned that particularly in the first week, that the greatest ni'mah a person can have is that realization and the understanding that they exist to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repeats this concept over and over again in the Quran, mentioning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us to worship him and to be his servants subhanahu wa and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentions in the Quran some of the characteristics in different places he mentions the descriptions of who these people are the ones that are servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and from the places where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discusses that is a portion in the Quran that we want to reflect upon inshallah in the next two sessions this one and inshallah the following session bi'nillahi ta'ala and that is the ayat or the verses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed in the last portion of Surah Al-Furqan. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in those ayat list characteristics of his slaves and his servants. Not all of the characteristics, but some of their characteristics. And in those ayat in particular, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins by saying, وَعِبَادُ Rahman," And the slaves, the servants of Allah ar-Rahman, the one who is the most beneficent, the most gracious. From his attributes, subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the attribute of his mercy, tabaraka wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions these servants of his, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then he mentions characteristics, some characteristics of them. And after mentioning and listing these characteristics, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الَّذِينَ الَّذِينَ Several times listing what their characteristics are. And then at the very end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions those individuals with those characteristics, those servants of Allah ar-Rahman, what is their reward? And what will they receive for being the servants of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to be from his servants. So before actually getting into this issue of talking about these descriptions and these characteristics that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in these ayat, particularly with regards to the servants of Ar-Rahman, I want us to just take the opportunity to reflect about the importance of being a servant of Allah. And how being a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the greatest ni'mah and it is an honor to be from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's servants and slaves. And as I mentioned in the beginning, this is the objective and the reason why we have been created. And the reason why we're on this planet is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we look at the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as being his servant. And that is an honor for the Prophet Sallallahu being the best of creation, yet he was referred to by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala as the servant of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and we see this in several places in the Quran. So, if the best of creation, Muhammad Alayhi Salatu Salam, whom we love and we follow in everything that he does and everything that he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, because he is the example for us to follow, if he was referred to as a servant of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala then it shows the indication that a person who's, who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses to be from his servants, it's a status that is elevated and a status that is high. You ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from them. And in order to be from the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have to take upon yourself the characteristics that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants for you to become from the people, in order for you to become from the people of uh, the, the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yani It's not a case of just simply claiming To be a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala It's easy to claim faith It's easy to just claim and say that I have iman, I have faith I am a servant of Allah But your, your, your claim is not enough Unless it is actually established in your heart And that establishment of faith in your heart And that understanding of servitude to Allah Being established in your heart Is actually followed up by actions Right? Once you believe and understand that your responsibility towards Allah is to obey and serve Him, then your limbs and your actions follow along and actually doing uh, those actions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala requires from you to do. Right? So it's not simply iman and faith and, and, and ubudiyah. It's not a claim that you make, that you, um, that you do. لِذَلِكَ uh, Hassan al-Basri who said, لَيْسَ الْإِيمَانُ بِالْتَمَنِّي ليس الإيمان بالتمني ولكن ما وقر في القلب وصدقه العمل يعني إيمان is not something that you just wish for and claim and say that you have it it's not simply enough to be from the people of faith to simply just say I'm a believer but faith is what is established in the heart and is actually um, embodied or physically established by the limbs the tongue and uh, the, the actions. So this is very important to understand with regards to uh, being a person of faith, being a person of servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in these ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the sifat of the ibad al-Rahman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions some characteristics. He mentions eight of them in these ayat. And inshallah in today's session we're going to discuss four 
of those characteristics and inshallah we'll conclude our next session which is next week inshallah by speaking about the remaining four as well as the outcome and the reward for those people who are from the people of uh, from the who have these characteristics of the servants of Ar-Rahman. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from amongst them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins by saying Ibadur Rahman, the servants of Ar-Rahman. And the first characteristic he mentions in that ayah is with regards to their behavior and how they carry themselves. And that is that the people who are the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are humble. They have humility. They are people when they walk in the earth, when they are dealing and interacting with people, they are not arrogant. They don't carry themselves in a way where they put other people down. Right? Their humbleness is first towards Allah, their creator, because they understand that they are the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they humble this, themselves towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And as a result, they are also humble in their interactions with the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the rest of the creation. So it is not from the characteristics of the people of uh, the Ibad al-Rahman, it's not from the characteristics that they look down upon other people, that they see themselves as being better and being above other people. They're not arrogant when it comes to their interaction with other people. So the first characteristic that the ayah mentions here, the ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ibad al-Rahman, alladhina yamshuna ala al-ardi hawna. When they walk, they walk on the earth humbly. They have humility, right? So this characteristic of, have, of having humility, tuma'nina, sakina, having contentment, uh, composure, I should say, tranquility, these are from the characteristics of the ibad al-Rahman. So they're not, and so kibir, which is the opposite of, humi- of being humble, the being arrogant is not from the characteristic of the people who serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Kibir is something that is looked down upon. And the Prophet ﷺ described what kibir is when he says, بطر الحق وغمض الناس That kibir is ignoring the truth and rejecting the truth and putting people down. That is what kibir is. So the person who serves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who wants to be the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's humble with Allah, meaning he accepts everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands him to do. And he does it without question. And when it comes to interacting and dealing with the people, he doesn't put the people down, he deals with them in a humble way. All right? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the same ayah with regards to the same characteristic, وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمْ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا And when they interact, and when the people of ignorance, right, the people of foolishness, when they speak to them, and they speak to them in a way that is foolish, in a way that is arrogant, in a way that is uh, unlawful, whether it's insulting them or being harmful towards them, their response to them is a response that involves peace. They say to them words that would are that are good, right? قَالُوا سَلَامًا بِمَعْنَى They say things that are good towards them. They respond to the evil with goodness. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this concept in the Qur'an, right? إِدْفَعْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنٌ Respond or give back in a way that is better than what has come your way. So the people of uh, the sifat of the servant of Ar-Rahman is when they're interacting with the people and people deal with them in a way that is negative, they respond positively. They deal with them properly and correctly. They do not respond with evil, with evil by, by doing evil to the person. Rather, they respond to them and they speak to them in a way that is that is good. And we, and we see this established, this concept established in the Quran, speaking about the manners of the Muslim and how the Muslim should be somebody when it comes to his akhlaq and his manners with other people, he should deal with them in the best of characteristics. So this is the first characteristic of the, the, the servant of Ar-Rahman, is that they are humble, they are composed, they are good when it comes to interacting with the people. They are humble even more so and first off with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when people deal with them in a way that is wrong, insult them, swear at them, then they respond with goodness and khair. And we see this in the life of the Prophet and in the example of the Messenger of Allah 
alayhi salatu wasalam. So, it is important to understand that as human beings, we're social creatures. And it is natural for us to be interacting with people. And when you interact with people, people will deal with you differently. Whether that is face-to-face, -face, whether that is online, wherever, whatever interaction that might be, the Muslim always has to be somebody that when they're dealing with a person, they work and work hard on themselves to deal with the people in a way that is good. Even if the person is dealing with them in a way that is, that is wrong and that is evil. One last point that is very important to mention, and we see this point constantly throughout discussing the descriptions of the sifat of the ibad al-Rahman or the characteristics of the slaves of Allah is that they constantly ask Allah for assistance in everything that they do and we'll see this inshallah throughout they constantly ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for assistance similarly in this issue of dealing with people the servant of the of Allah ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow them to be good with people and we see some of the du'as of the Prophet وسلم, where he's actually teaching us and he's informing us to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us people that are good with others, to rectify our mannerisms with other people and to not allow ourselves to be ignorant with people and protect us from the ignorance of others. From the du'as that the Prophet وسلم, used to make in the morning, he used to make du'as seeking protection and seeking protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from certain things, and from them was asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika an ajhala aw yujhal aliyya. Oh Allah, do not allow my, me, me to be ignorant with people and protect me from the ignorance of others. So you're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to rectify yourself when it comes to your mannerisms with people. From the du'as the Prophet taught us, and he used to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we should make these du'as as well, is ihdini li ahsan al-akhlaq. Oh Allah, guide me to the best of manners. La yahdi li ahsaniha illa ant. Nobody guides a person to the best of manners except you, O oh Allah. So this is du'a that we make asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to having good manners, to dealing with other people. So the first characteristic of the Ibad al-Rahman, we ask Allah to make us from them, is they are humble and they are can they are composed and they have tranquility when they in their in how they carry themselves. And when they deal with people, they deal with people in the best of manners, even if the person deals with them in a manner that involves ignorance, they respond with the best of ways. And that is taken from the first ayah. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَا They walk on the earth humbly. And when they deal with, when they when they come into interaction with people and the people deal with them with ignorance, وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا They say to them, salam, meaning they respond to them in a means that is good and peaceful. طيب. The second characteristic of the servants of Ar-Rahman Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the ayah, وَالَّذِينَ يَبِيتُونَ لِرَبِّهِمْ سُجَّدًا وَقِيَامًا وَالَّذِينَ يَبِيتُونَ لِرَبِّهِمْ سُجَّدًا وَقِيَامًا From their characteristics, they are those whom at night, they spend their night making sajda and standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this leads us to the second characteristic, which is the characteristic of Establishing and being committed to performing the salah and particularly the night prayer, salatul layl. Allah in this ayah specifically mentions that their characteristic is they pray at night. And it's referring to the qiyam. It's referring to the qiyam or the night prayer. However, what is understood from the ayah and what is implied in the ayah is that they establish the night prayer as well as the salawat. Because as we know, the night prayer is not from the obligatory prayers. It's a sunnah prayer. In fact, it's from the best of, it is the best prayer after the five daily prayers. As the Prophet ﷺ said, that the best prayer to be established after the five daily prayers is the night prayer. So they establish the night prayer. And within that, of course, the obvious is they're also 
establish the five daily prayers as well as the nawafil that come along with it, the, the sunan prayer that come along with that. So the characteristic of the Ibad al-Rahman is they establish this action of salah. And salah is the best physical act of worship that a Muslim can do. It is the most important act of worship after the shahadatain. After the testimony of believing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone is deserving of worship, salah is the most important act that a Muslim can do. Five times a day, a Muslim must pray. So, the ibad al-Rahman are those that not only have they established the five daily salawat, as well as the nawafil, but they also pray the best prayer which comes after the five, which is the night prayer. They stand up a portion of the night, and they establish this salah at night. And some important points that we need to mention with regards to this. We first always, as I said in the beginning, the servant of Allah, they always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to assist them in whatever they need help in. So again, in establishing our prayer and, establish, and being consistent in our salawat and doing our extra prayers, the voluntary prayers, we always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to establish and help us to establish these prayers. Right? Lidhalika from the du'as that we say after the salah and the Prophet taught Mu'ad radiallahu anhu and he told him do not leave after every salah, do not forget to say Allahum a'inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika Always ask Allah, Oh Allah, assist me, help me in establishing the salah. Sorry, in establishing the dhikr. And establishing, thanking you. And doing the best of acts of worship. And from the best of acts of worship, as I mentioned right now, the best act of worship is the salah. And the five daily prayers is an obligatory prayer that we must pray five times a day. And after that, the best prayer to pray is the night prayer. So we need to teach ourselves to, in order to be from these people, we need to strive and try to pray a portion of the night every night. Even if it's standing up and praying two rak'ahs and witr. Even if it's praying them, in the beginning praying them after Salat al-Isha, to pray a two rak'ahs and pray witr. And then teach yourself to pray at night, more rak'ahs. And teach yourself and practice to wake up a portion of the night. And the best portion of the night to pray is the last third of the night. As the Prophet ﷺ said, the last third of the night is the night where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes to the lowest heaven and he asks his servant, who will ask me so I shall give? So the night prayer is something that should be done by the servant, especially at the last portion of the night. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to be those who establish that. Normally, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it easy for many of the servants to establish qiyam, especially in the month of Ramadan. So we should make take it upon ourselves that we know Ramadan is coming. And now we're towards the end of the month of Rajab. And we only have about a month and a week left till the month of Ramadan. To start practicing the act of praying a portion of the night now. So by the time Ramadan arrives, we're ready to do it easily every night. And when Ramadan is done then it becomes part of our DNA that every night, even if it's at the beginning of the night, preferably to wake up at the last portion of the night to pray the Qiyam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here praises the Ibad al-Rahman, He praises them for praying at night. And as I mentioned in the beginning, what is included in that is from the obvious is that they do the five daily prayers properly. Two more points I want to mention before moving on to the next characteristic. The first point that I want to mention is with regards to the fact that we need to keep in mind that the five daily prayers, the khamsa salawat, the five daily prayers is a daily measurement for us to kind of measure our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our, and our deen based on how our salah was. Did I pray it properly? Did I pray it on time? Did I, did, was I make, did I pray it in jama'ah um, in the situation where we have to pray in the masjid? Obviously now because of the masjid in our communities being closed, we pray it at home. But establishing it on time, establishing it correctly, do we actually do that? So that's a mi'yar, it's a, it's a measurement for the servant to see, okay, my day was good because I made sure 
my relationship with Allah was proper by praying on time. Okay, today I, I delayed my this salah, so I need to work on that. So it's a daily routine, five times a day, every day, where you're, it's, it's a constant method of you checking yourself. Is by how your salah is. And we always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to assist us and to give us the success and tawfiq in being on top of our prayer. And the Prophet ﷺ said that the first thing that we will be asked about on the day of judgment is the salah. And if your salah is good, then everything after that will be good. Indicating to us the importance of taking care of the salah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from them. Second thing is the servants of Ar-Rahman. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is praising them here, Allah, is, Allah as I mentioned, Allah is praising them over an action that is a nafila, right? It's from the voluntary prayers. Qiyam al-Layl is from the voluntary prayers. And there's something interesting here, is that they work hard towards that because they know that from the ways to attain the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is by doing those actions in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us to do that are voluntary. The voluntary acts of worship are the ones that will increase Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's love for us and will result in us attaining Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's love. And that's, we get that from the hadith of the Prophet where he said, alayhi salatu salam, وَلَا يَزَالُ عَبْدِي يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ بِالنَّوَافِلِ حَتَّى أُحِبَّهِ The Prophet ﷺ told us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, the hadith Qudsi, that Allah said that the servant does not attempt or he continues to get closer to me with the voluntary prayers, except that I actually love him because of that. By him continuously trying to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the voluntary prayers, there is, there is voluntary actions, including the salawat that are voluntary, that is a means of attaining the hub of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's very, it's a very deep concept that the people who are striving towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they, it's not, for them, it's not simply establishing what Allah commanded them to do, but it's to take it further to attain Allah's pleasure and Allah's love. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from them, to make us from those who not only establish the five daily salawat, but also establish the nawafah that come along with it and be from those who stand up at night and pray uh, at the night, a portion of the night, uh, the night prayer, the qiyamul layl. So the second characteristic that these ayat mention are they are those who get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by establishing the night prayer. As Allah mentioned in the next ayah, they spend the portion of the night making sajda and standing up in prayer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The third characteristic from the characteristics of the servants of Allah ar-Rahman is they have fear of Jahannam. They have fear of the hellfire. Them re constantly reminding themselves about the hellfire as a means to keep themselves on check, as a means to correctly serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Human beings, we have a tendency to forget, we have a tendency to be weak, we have a tendency to make mistakes, but when the servant reminds himself about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's punishment, if they disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it helps them to stay on track. It helps them to stay on track. And at the same time, while doing that, they strive and work hard in pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, having hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's reward. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the next ayah with regards to the servants of Ar-Rahman, Allah says, الَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا إِصْرِفْ عَنَّا عَذَابَ جَهَنَّمْ إِنَّ عَذَابَهَا كَانَ غَرَامًا إِنَّهَا سَاءَتْ مُسْتَقَرًّا وَمُقَامًا here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning that from their characteristics is that they ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they say, Oh Allah, take away, keep away and turn away the punishment of the hellfire from us. Because the hellfire, the punishment of the hellfire, if one is in it, it is mulazim to them. It does not leave them. And indeed, the hellfire is an evil place for a person to reside and for a person to live in. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from this. Now I want us to really reflect upon this. It's a very important uh, benefit that inshallah I hope we can reflect and utilize and implement this inshallah. 
these servants of Ar-Rahman, they ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a dua they're making. They're making dua to Allah. Oh Allah, protect us from the fire. Turn the fire away from us. And they're doing so while being people that are serving Allah. They're praying at night. They're establishing their salah. We'll speak about the other characteristics that coming up inshallah. They do, they're doing all these acts of goodness in the hopes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewarding them and being pleased with them while at the same time reminding themselves about the hellfire and asking Allah, Oh Allah, keep the hellfire away from us. And this is something that is very that is unique to the true believer. The true believer is one who, while fully immersing and pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and serving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and staying away from that which Allah has commanded him to stay away from, and coming forth with the things that Allah told him to do, while doing all that, he still has the fear in his heart of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's punishment. And that is the true believer. Right? Hassan al-Basri, uh, ta'ala, he mentioned a very nice statement commenting on some of the ayat in the Quran in Surah al in Surah Al-Mu'minun, he mentioned with regards to the believer, he said, Al-Mu'min jama'a ihsanan wa shafaqa wal-munafiq jama'a bayna isa'atan wa amn That the believer is one whom he, he does his acts of worship with ihsan, fully and correctly and properly, and he does it serving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while still having in his heart the fear that maybe I didn't do it fully. Maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't accept it from me. So he does the actions fully and correctly while still feeling that I need to come forth with more. It might be a chance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not accepted it. I hope that Allah accepts it, but he balances between that fear and hope. However, the munafiq, jama'a bayna isa'atan wa amn. The munafiq, when it comes to his acts of worship, he doesn't do his acts of worship properly. He's lazy. He doesn't come with it fully. He doesn't want to do it. He does it out of hatred at times. He does it to show other people that he's doing it. His a'mal, he's doing it in a way that is incorrect. And on top of that, he's pleased with himself. He's pleased that he's okay. And that is an evil characteristic to have. And the believer, however, while not working fully to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he still wants to make sure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not pleased with him. And we see this characteristic in the Sahaba of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, That some of them were even promised Jannah while they were alive. Some of them were even promised Jannah while they were alive. They were known as people of khair, yet they still had fear that they might have some hypocrisy in them. They might have some... So they worked hard towards pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while having that fear in them of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's punishment if they do it incorrectly. So it's that balance between al khawf and raja So the believers, those who are the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they constantly remind themselves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's punishment. Second important benefit with regards to this point that I really want us to reflect upon is here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that this, these servants of Ar-Rahman, they ask, they make dua, Oh Allah, protect us from the hellfire. And as we know, and the scholars mentioned with regards to dua in particular, is that when the servant makes dua, and he asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something, the servant should always follow up his dua by actually going forth and attaining and doing the asbab that will cause whatever he wants to happen. So the servant asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and after asking Allah, he strives towards that which will be beneficial to him with regards to what he asked. For example, a servant asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for knowledge. Oh Allah, zidni ilma. Rabbi zidni ilma. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, ask him. We ask Allah to increase his knowledge. The servant should go forth and actually put the effort to learn. It's not going to happen where you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala zidni ilma and you're going to sit at home or sit in your bed and expect the knowledge to come to you from the sky. It doesn't work that way. Oh Allah, increase me in, in wealth. Oh Allah, rizuqni. grant me and increase me in provisions. You ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but you also have to, after asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, take the necessary means to attain that rizq. It doesn't work where you're just going to sit and the money is going to come. Oh Allah, bless me with a, with, with, child, with a wife and with children or with a husband and with children. And then you sit and do nothing. It doesn't work that way. 
That's not how the world works. You have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also take the means. لذلك, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in the hadith, احرس على ما ينفعك واستعن بالله. Strive towards that which is beneficial to you and seek Allah's assistance. Ask Allah for help and then move forward. Similarly, with regards to this dua of asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect you from the fire of hell, to, to move the fire of hell away from us, you have to actually come forth with those things that will actually protect you from the fire of hell. And that's understood from the ayat here, that the servants of, the servants of Allah ar-Rahman, the ibad ar-Rahman, the true believers and servants of Allah, they ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they also make sure that they avoid all of those things that will result in them going to the fire of hell. Let me say that one more time. They ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect them from the hellfire and they take the necessary precautions and f avoid those things that will result in them entering into the hellfire and uh, result in them being punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to give you a, a good benefit and a dalil for this specific point, we see the dua of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the dua that he taught Aisha. He told Aisha radiallahu anha, I'm going to teach you a dua to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the dua was long. And from the dua that he, he, he taught Aisha radiallahu anha was, Allahumma inni as'aluka al-jannah wa ma qarraba ilayha min qawlin aw amal wa a'udhu bika min al-nar wa ma qarraba ilayha min qawlin aw amal. Oh Allah, I ask you for paradise. And I ask you for those things from the a'mal or the aqwal, from the statements or the actions that will cause me to enter into Jannah. The things that will bring me closer to the Jannah, the speech, the things that I can say or the actions that I can do that will bring me closer to Jannah. Oh Allah, grant me that. Oh Allah, protect me from the Jahannam. And protect me from all of those things that will lead me to get close to Jahannam. Whether it's statements or actions. So we learn from this dua, we're asking Allah not only to protect us from the hellfire, but also to protect us from those things that will lead the person to enter into Jahannam. So the servant of Ar-Rahman, he is a person whom he asks Allah, he has khawf of Jahannam, he asks Allah to protect them from Jahannam, and he takes the means to actually protect and prevent himself from doing those things, those acts of disobedience that will lead into the, entering that place. We ask Allah to protect us from the Jahannam. And, the ayah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the next ayah, إِنَّهَا سَاءَتْ مُسْتَقَرًّا وَمُقَامًا Indeed, Jahannam, what an evil place for a person to establish themselves, to live and reside in. Because when the person leaves the dunya and they die, it's either going to be a person will be residing in Jannah or they will be residing in Jahannam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from Jahannam and allow us to be from the residents of Jannah. So, we have to take the necessary precautions to avoid ourselves from being the residents of Jahannam by pleasing Allah, by staying away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's prohibitions. So this is an important characteristic of those people who are known as the servants of Allah, is that they constantly remind themselves of the Jahannam. And the more a person reads about the Jahannam and they have fear of it, they avoid, they make sure that they strive to avoid those things that will allow them to fall into that. And the more the person reads about the paradise and, and the reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for those who in this dunya serve him, that is a motivation for them to strive towards those things that will result in them being from the people of Jannah. So the third characteristic is خوفهم من عذاب النار Their fear from the hellfire. And we mentioned the ayah, الَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا صْرِفْ عَنَّا عَذَابَ جَهَنَّمْ إِنَّ عَذَابَهَا كَانَ غَرَامًا إِنَّهَا سَاءَتْ مُسْتَقَرًّا وَمُقَامًا The fourth uh, characteristic, and inshallah will be the last characteristic for the night, for our session, is that the ibad rahman when it comes to their finances and the money that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided for them, they are balanced and moderate. And they're balanced between two extremes. The extreme of being extremely stingy and the extreme of being extremely wasteful in their wealth. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the ayah, وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا أَنْفَقُوا لَمْ يُسْرِفُوا وَلَمْ يَقْتُرُوا 
وكان بين ذلك قواما الله سبحانه وتعالى said that the servants of Ar-Rahman those they are the ones whom when they are giving with the money that they spend they do not waste nor do they hold back and nor are they stingy but they are in between those two and they are moderate in between the two they are balanced in between those two extremes and this is how the Muslim is with regards to his finances especially in this ayah talking about the person and how they deal with their money and in general in all aspects of the Muslim's life they are balanced between not being too extreme to one end or too extreme to the other hand لذلك Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطَى Indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has established and made you this ummah an ummah that is in the middle path you are balanced in all of your affairs you are balanced because the people in general are always going to be one of three categories either they're going to be too excessive and extreme in terms of being excessive or they're going to be extreme in being too you know in minimizing and being too lenient or they're going to be in between the two and the group that are in between are the ones that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala requires the believer to be that he is balanced in all his affairs and in this situation he is balanced in the money that he has the money that he has the people that he's supposed to provide for his family members and people that he provides for he is not too wasteful and just spending all the money and not being careful in terms of how he spends his money he just spends it without without being with, while being careless about how he spends his money and at the same time he's not somebody who's extremely stingy that does not provide for his family give his family what they need fulfill the responsibilities that he has to fulfill financially towards those that he's responsible towards the muslim is balanced in between those two and we see in the quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala particularly mentions that we shouldn't be people that are wasteful with our money Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes a command wala tubaddiru tabdira wala tubaddir tabdira inna almubaddirina kanu ikhwan ash-shayatin Allah says and don't be those who are wasteful indeed those who waste who are wasteful with their wealth they are the brothers of the devils Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to them as so we were not too wasteful and at the same time we're not stingy and miserly with regards to those who were responsible towards let alone the extra voluntary act of giving to those that are in need and helping those that are uh, that 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 require assistance right that is extra and voluntary but even with regards to those that you're responsible for that you have to give that's obligatory for you to give you're not stingy with regards to giving them nor do you overspend without being balanced with regards to your finances so you are in between and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about mentions about those people that the balance the those who balance between wasting and being stingy they are the ones that are upon the right way that in between there is the correct way wa kana bayna dhalika qawama moderately in between is the way to go with regards to finances in this ayah is talking specifically about their their money and as well the ibad rahman are balanced and moderate in all of their other aspects of life the ayat, the remaining ayat of the surah mention four more characteristics as well as the reward for the people who are the servants of Allah Ar-Rahman. And inshallah ta'ala, we we're, going to, we're going to discuss those four and their reward and how they will end up inshallah in the session that we will have in uh, next week inshallah ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to be from the servants of Ar-Rahman. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to worship him correctly. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to be from his servants. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to listen and understand and actually benefit and implement what we hear. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow this to be an opportunity for us for our sins to be forgiven. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to lift off this difficulty and this trial that we're going through right now. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cure all of those who are sick. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give strength to those who are going through difficulty at the moment. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this an opportunity for us to have strength in Iman and allow this difficulty to be an opportunity for us to turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And remember that these difficult times that we're going through now is a test and it is our responsibility to be aware of what we're going through at the moment and be spiritually aware and turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek his help and his assistance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our sins. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our deeds. 
Jazakum Allah khairan, my brothers and sisters. Barak Allah fiq. Insha'Allah, we will be uh, continuing our session uh, next week. Jazakum Allah khairan. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.